And welcome to another edition of Mark's Madness. Joined as always by Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel and Mark, I've been waiting to ask you. We had the big game this past week. Coldwater Marion, two undefeateds, two number ones, yeah. and the Flyers got the shutout. Yeah. What does it all mean? Well, you know, the score is sometimes not indicative of the game. Last year, I know it was a big uh, difference too, and it was a little closer, at least for most of the game. But this really was a defensive battle. I mean, you look at the, the first downs, there were 19 total in the whole game, barely over 300 yards total. You know, neither team was over 200. So uh, it, it was a defensive battle all the way, and just little things, little plays make the difference. Marion Local made those plays and came away with a big, big win. We, we know what those two offenses have done coming into the game, and so many playmakers on both sides yeah. of the ball, but the defenses might be yeah. even better on yeah. both sides, which just makes it all the more scary headed into the postseason for any of their opponents. That's right. You know, you hear it all over the place. You know, offense wins games, defense wins championships, and, and you always concentrate on the offensive playmakers because they're the ones that get their name in the paper and things, but their defenses have been good all down through these championship years, and this year is no different. They're good. So is Marion Local in the driver's seat for another MAC title? I think they're in the driver's see because they beat cold water but they will be tested you know this week they go to Fort Recovery Fort Recovery's you know in the mix all right the week after they go to Versailles again a road game at Versailles Versailles playing very well right now and then they finish up with Delphi St. John's now St. John's has really struggled the last couple of weeks but that's always been a very competitive game so they will have to earn it by winning out here uh, it's not going to be handed to them of course Coldwater with the one loss they're right there waiting for Marion local to stumble absolutely to the Western Buckeye League now, Wapak and OG, another big game in the area. Wapak comes out on top, and now Kenton had a tough win against Elida. Elida really gave them a hard time. And then when you look at the WBL now, it's Wapak, Kenton, and then OG and Bath are 4-2. and two. So it's, right there. it's pretty yeah. interesting in that Western Buckeye Kinda League waiting. right now. Yeah, yeah uh, you know, again, Wapak's out there, you know. Undefeated. They, they, yeah, they, they've taken care of all comers so far. They beat Kenton. They beat OG. Those are the two that everybody thought was going to challenge them for the league. So you have to say that they're in the driver's seat. They've got a couple of interesting games coming up. You know, one that you've dubbed the Doug Fry Bowl. I love that. That's, that's good because it'll be a very, very emotional game. Um, and one that only OG last week kept them from looking ahead to. Right. You know, so uh, that, the, the, the schedule gave the, the, you know, the Redskins a favor there because they didn't get upset the week before the big game. So. Right, OG, a tough opponent. You can't overlook it. But right. you know from yeah. when we talked to them on the warm-up, they were looking forward to this yeah. game uh -huh. against St. Mary's because yeah. it's their former coach. They're, it's their former coach, Doug Fry, now at St. Mary's. And St. Mary's pretty good. They go to Defiance and rush for 541 yards. Now, I know Defiance is really struggling on defense, but 541 yards, I'm not sure I could gain that much in, in an hour's time with no defense out there. Right, you know? just running so, up and down yeah, the field. So they'll run it, and they'll control the clock. And Wapak's going to have to be very judicious on offense and take good care of their scoring opportunities because I don't think they're going to get a lot of them. This will be a good game. I mean, when, this will make St. Mary's year, maybe decade, if they get this win. Oh, it'd be huge. Yeah. But when the Rough Riders can establish the ground game, we saw it week one. Remember that mm -hmm. big win against Sydney? And mm -hmm. they, they just rushed and rushed and rushed, especially in the first half. Yeah. They're very difficult to beat. So I'm sure Wapak is game yeah. planning for that. Fitzgerald's over 1,000 already. You know, he almost had 300 against Elida a couple of weeks ago. He's a real back, and, and Wapak's defense is really, really good. I mean, no, let's not you know, hide away from that fact. They're going to have to play to, to score on Wapak. But that'll be a good game. And then, you know, you look at the contenders, OG and Bath, week 10, they could still, both still be in the hunt, certainly for, for the playoffs. That'll be a big game to look forward to down the road. Talking about big games, NWC, we got another big game this week when Spencerville takes on Crestview, but the Knights are coming off a loss. Yeah. They fell to Ada in a big game, and, and we'll take a look at a play from that game mm -hmm. a little later on. It was a punt, yeah. punt pretty crazy yeah. play. But yeah, the Knights, it was right there. They were right there, and Crestview's trying to score right at the end of the game, you know, and they just run out of time and downs. And, and so, yeah, that this is their chance to get back, you know, and tie this thing up again. Jefferson's got one loss in the league. They beat Spencerville. They all got one loss, assuming that Jefferson wins their, their game this week. But we're going to find out because this week it's Spencerville and Crestview, and next, uh, week 10 it's Crestview or Spencerville and Jefferson, and they're just going to beat each other up these last three weeks and see who comes out on top. But I think all three look pretty good for the play. Playoffs. All three do look good for the playoffs. It's been a fun league to watch all mm -hmm. year, and it's yeah. still pretty good much league. up Very in the league. air for a league title. So yeah. that's going to be fun the next yeah. three games to see what yep. happens. Mm -hmm. And we got to talk about Lima Senior because they <laughs> remain undefeated. Every week it's something new with them. This time mm -hmm. they broke a school record for points with 72 mm -hmm. in a score, a basketball score <laughs> sure against uh, St. Mm -hmm. John's. Yeah, they so. give up 50. Yeah. You know? Well, this week they got. 
Clay. Clay's one and six, and <laughs> they might break the record again this week. You know, they might score more than record. 72. Yeah. But, you know, and, and they've got a lot of good players. We talk about them, but let's talk about Reuben Flowers now because he had 265 yards receiving. Only on seven catches, but three of them hit touchdowns, so some long plays. Uh, I don't know how you stop it. You know, you, you got to double team him. You got to have some size back there because he's 6'4. He can jump out of the, we say the gym in the basketball. He jumps out of the field, you know. He's really, really good. But, you know, Lima Senior looking ahead. They get this one, then, then it's show me time. You know, they got Toledo Central Catholic week nine. They got Toledo Whitmer week 10. Uh, Whitmer's down a little bit with three losses this year, but Central Catholic's very good. Their, their losses are against good, good teams. So, um, Lima Senior. <laughs> Man, if you could draw it up the last summer, you'd have taken this one, right? 7-0, and and here we go. Without a doubt. They're going to have a challenge to get to 10-0, and but yep. it is possible. Yep. And what a season Mike yep. Bell and the Spartans are having. It's time for a break here on Mark's Madness. When we return, we're going to break down a handful of plays. There were so many good plays this week, there we couldn't choose just one. So Mark and I will take a look at them when we come back here on Mark's Madness. Welcome back to Mark's Madness, and it's time to break down a play or a handful of plays in yep. this case. And we're going to get started with a matchup between Ada and Crestview towards the end of the game. Huge play here on special teams. Well, a couple of guys, Noah Beach, Levi Bass, 55 and 56, both got in there. Not sure who it hit first, but <laughs> ball kind of pops between his legs. And there's Jordan Bailey, right place, right time, ends up with it. Now we're going to see a slow motion replay. They're coming after him. This game is very tight right now. This play actually ended up turning into the winning score. They get the block, balls on the ground, reaches up, down to pick it up, doesn't get a hold of it, but it pops, we think, between his legs, and right there is Jordan Bailey escorted into the end zone, and that is the winning score. So special teams can be huge, huge plays because they, they do things like that. They get points. Now, special teams to offense, a play you called, and a mm -hmm. long touchdown play, a little trickery. Show us why. Well, you're going to look at the play again, and, and it, it is really a tackle eligible because Levi Kistler, number 11, lines up on the far side at tackle. Number 77, Zach Little, lined up in the slot to the sideline that the camera was on. The defense thought the tackle was the receiver, and the receiver was the tackle, did not guard Kistler. He ran straight down the field. Mitchell Alt raises up, hits him, untouched into the end zone, and that was early in the game in a big play. So we saw special teams and offense. How about a little defense? This is one of the wackiest plays I've ever seen. Yeah, this is awesome. It's five touches on this one, and Chase Clark, number 15, ends up getting the touchdown off an interception. But watch it now, slow-mo. There it hits a, def a defender off his offensive guy's shoulder pad, defender again, and there is Clark again. The tip drill comes into play, and that's a big interception return for a touchdown. So three amazing plays, <laughs> all touchdowns. Yeah. Special teams, defense, yeah. offense, we got it all. And great job by all our cameramen getting those great shots for you, and we can, were able to break them down. Really enjoyed it. Thanks again, Mark. As always, time for our last break here on Mark's Madness. But when we come back, it's time to take a look ahead to Week 8. So many good games coming up. Don't go anywhere. Third and final down here on Mark's Madness. And Mark, we got to talk about the BVC because Van Buren had a big win, a dominant win at Lipsick. Yeah, they really did. You know, 43 to 6, and, and Lipsick's pretty good. So we, we knew Van Buren was good. You know, they stumbled against a good team earlier and got the one loss. But, um, you know, week 10 again, they play PG, you know, and, and that's the, what I look to be their last real challenge, uh, you know, not to win that Blanchard division. So they, it looks like they're, you know, they're in a good spot right now. Division 6, Region 20, Van Buren currently in 7th in the playoff mm -hmm. points. They would meet Spencerville mm -hmm. if the playoffs started mm -hmm. today. Let me just run through that, that, that region for you. First is Tenora. Mm -hmm. They're undefeated. They Very look really good. good. Spencerville's 2, mm -hmm. LCC 3, Crestview 4, Wayne Trace 6, Van Buren 7. We do have a lot of local schools oh boy, in that region, yeah. and that is going to yeah. be fun to watch come playoff time if it, yeah. if it hangs like that. If it's the the like only that. bad part of that for us is that you they know, knock our, each other out. our yeah. teams lose, right. you know, but our teams win too. Right. You know? So you're so, guaranteed to so have So you root for the locals all the way through in the playoffs, and in that division they just beat the heck out of each other right off the bat. But, you know, they, the other side of that division, the Valley, that, that's the Arlington, Macomb, and, and – uh, Liberty Benton, and they're just going to play each other here these last week 9 and 10 and just beat each other up because they all play each other. So 
Uh, that'll be determined there, but that's a heck of a uh, other side of the division of that Blanchard Valley Conference. Yeah, the two league champions in the mm -hmm. BBC this year will, will really earn it. Yep. How about in the NWCC? Big one on Saturday mm -hmm. was played between Lehman Catholic and Fort Lormie. Fort Lormie yeah. And Le it was played at Lehman, and Lehman got the victory 35 21. Mm -hmm. so well, that puts them in the, in the driver's seat. They, they got the inside track to the championship. Lormie's got to play Riverside in week 10, and Riverside's got just the one loss in the league. So that'll be a challenge for them to you know keep that one loss or get playoff points and positioning. But right now, Sydney Lehman, 3 0 in the league, and they've already beaten Fort Lormie. Um, Riverside, you know, they've got some tough games to play yet, but uh, that was a good game. Those are two good teams. Fort Lorman, you look at, you said earlier who they've lost to. I mean, I they've lost Minster, yeah. and now Sydney Lehman, and then Tenora, who yeah. Tenora is ranked first. So those are three good losses, those are tough three losses. quality Lormie. losses if there is such a thing as a quality loss, right. but nonetheless, good Fort Lorman's good. Yeah. Matt Bergbacher's got him good. And Sydney Lehman right now, Lehman Catholic, they are in second behind Marion Local in, in playoff points as well, so in Division 7, yeah. so yeah. in their region. They're good. They've earned it. It's good to stay close to Marion Local so you don't have to play them early. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at uh, week eight. Can't believe mm -hmm. it's week eight already, but we that's got a, good games on the schedule, a yeah. lot of league games, and a lot mm -hmm. of playoff points to be handed out. Yep. So what, what do you got your eye on? Well, we've already mentioned Spencerville and Crestview. That's a TV game for us, and we've got some other good TV games. But uh, uh, three games out of the mat catch my eye because I think – not only is it, is it who can stay close to Marion local, uh, you know, Versailles is playing Coldwater. Coldwater has to hold serve, you know, and Versailles is playing pretty well right now. But a couple other games are going to have serious playoff implications. Minster at St. Henry, 5-2, and 4-3. and three. They both got playoff points. And then we mentioned Marion local going to Fort Recovery. That's not going to be an easy one. So a uh, big week in the MAC. When can you not say that, right? Big Always week is. in the MAC. But again, week eight, great games. And then we forecasted earlier as we were talking, week nine, week 10, there are going to be some huge matchups getting ready for league championship. The schedule is working out mm -hmm. for the fan yep. because yep. we're going to be. Have a, we're going to have a lot of fun those yeah. two weeks, as we have had all season. Let me quickly run through our broadcast schedule for you. The Doug Fry Bowl opens our five games of rebroadcast that we're going to bring you this week. Wapak ain't St. Mary at St. Mary's this year is on WOSN at 11. Spencerville Crestview on WTLW following the 75-minute sports report at 11.15. Saturday doubleheader begins with Paulding at Columbus Grove, NWC matchup at 7 on WOSN, followed by Clay Lima Sr., a chance to watch those Spartans. <laughs> at nine, and then on Sunday at eight, it is Dayton Meadowdale against LCC. That is a Saturday game that you'll be able to see right here on Sunday evening. So that's gonna do it for this edition of Mark's Madness. We'll see you out there on the fields on Fridays and Saturdays. Enjoy your weekend of football.